well, first thing I would say, technology is a boon. Uh, we used to talk about this 10, 15 years back. Technology is a boon. Whenever I went to some seminars, I used to get that. But then I really un realized what it is right now. Sitting in India, I'm able to communicate with my teachers. I'm able to hold meetings with my teachers. I'm able to talk with my management. I'm able to talk with my business office. I'm able to talk with the HR. I'm able to talk with the finance guy. And we are able to sit at the convenience of our home and do. Uh, let me tell you, this was a shock when, uh, you know, somewhere around end of February, uh, we have uh, this holidays in Kuwait, they're called Hala February. As soon as we were getting back to school by 1st of March, by 28th of February, Kuwait declared that the next 15 days is lockdown. And uh, well, let me tell you, oh, I was not at all see. Uh, in fact, many others also thought, okay, in 15 days, we are going to be, be back to school. That's all. We never realized that we are going to sit now. It's going to be nearly four and a half to five months, going to sit at home. See, that's a total change when we realize that after 15 days, we are not going to come back and another month, after one month, another month. But then what are we going to do? What is going to happen to school? Schools were the first to be closed in Kuwait by end of February. And we also had the plan of opening up grade 10 and 12 current batch on 1st of March. How are we going to open when the schools are closed? And we were not prepared at all. Let me be very clear. We were not at all prepared. Teachers were not prepared. We didn't have a system. We didn't have a, a model that we could uh, use. What we did is uh, on March 3rd, I was in India. OK, we said, let us come on Zoom. The only platform I knew at that time was Zoom. Let me be very clear. So I may created an ID for me and we came on the platform on Zoom with the higher class teachers and we were actually talking and uh, uh, trying to find out how we can support our grade 10 and 12 students, uh, how we can give them materials to study. Thanks to my management, let me tell you, they are very advanced in IT. And uh, my chairman is always fond of the IT department and, uh, you know, improving technology, making things more comfortable through technology. So that really helped us. Uh, before we got the MS Teams, we were using the Zoom and we have this uh, portal called WAM app through which we were able to prepare the materials for grade 10 and 12. It was like, you know, we had two things to look at. Uh, uh, like many schools were following the blended, uh, like they follow the blended classroom. We had to choose between the synchronous and the asynchronous system. So we chose the asynchronous system where we were sending materials to the kids of 10th and 12th, where they can sit and learn like the heuristic model of teaching, learning in their own pace, at their own pace, at their own time in the, in the houses. And later, when we got this MS teams from the management, thanks to them again for giving us that opportunity, we had a great challenge in front of us because we did not know whether teachers are capable of handling online teaching. They were not trained. We don't know how to give the training. All this was the biggest challenge that we had. But then let me tell you and hats off to my teachers and to the teachers throughout the world, I will say, who have raised up at this uh, Thing and they have done phenomenally great training. They have got not only that, but every day classes were geared up. The PTMs went on, the one to one meetings went on, the orientations happened uh, and uh, technology as it was getting a uh, handy and uh, more that uh, uh, what I can say and the teachers were getting used to it. What they did, they started being comfortable and there was a genuine interest from their side to explore further in learning online. So now I will say this is what they are doing through so many webinars, going through free, uh, you know, programs on um, uh, uh, understanding IT and getting into various departments to really equip themselves further for the coming after post COVID. And amazing technology, amazing technology. And this helped us so much to connect. Although I will say it will not replace uh, you know, this can never replace a teacher. A technology definitely is important, but it cannot be a replacement to teachers. The, you know, the emotional connect, the eye to eye contact, you know, the bonding, uh, the, this and all cannot, uh, the intimacy between a teacher and the child, this cannot change the technology. See, I may project like being healthy right now here, but am I healthy from inside is very important. 
So how does this happen? Of course, everybody has their problems, but now with this change, this unprecedented changes that is happening, it has become very stressful for many, not only the teachers, the parents, the students, uh, and the community at large. Everybody are stressed because we have not seen this kind of a situation at all. We are sitting in a house in lockdown. We can't even open the door and go out. So that is the situation, especially in Kuwait. So uh, actually our teachers have been sharing a lot. They are busy with the online uh, classes, as we said. Coming to a school and doing a physical classroom is less challenging than online classroom. Let me be very frank. I'm sure the teachers will agree with me. When they came to the school, they had a specific time. They walked in at seven o'clock. They walked it at one, walked out at 1.30. They took care of the household chores. They took care of the children. They took up the care of the children's studies. They took care of the spouses and uh, their whatever they had to attend to. But now sitting at home, actually we, the corporate people, we have actually uh, got into the space in the privacy of the homes. See, when, uh, when for example, uh, I am going to my husband's uh, office, I have to maintain the decorum. I cannot talk loudly. I have to wait outside to meet him. I have to, to write down that slip to say that I have come to meet him. And there's a protocol, but when the corporate has invaded our homes, what are we doing? We are in a lesson. We tell uh, the babies, no, 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 go, go. The child wants water. No, you, no, no, go to the kitchen and help. We show, you know, and we, actually we, we have invaded the homes, but uh, what is happening? They are just sitting with us and uh, everybody at home in the kitchen, the cooker can't make a noise. But you should understand, this is not your office, it is your home. So, so these things are very important. Let me tell you at one point, one of the musket principals shared with us last week. So it was a Malayalam class for them. The Malayalam teacher, Malayali, uh, uh, the teacher was teaching Malayalam and he wanted everybody to come on the video to show the faces and just say a hi, give a uh, something. And this child, this child, uh, it was the seventh grade child. She didn't, want to come, she didn't want to show herself at all. And then after a lot of coaxing, because his son had asked to come out, she opened up a video and what uh, the teacher saw. She had her baby brother on her lap. She was taking care of the baby brother. She was studying. She was feeding the baby brother because mom and dad have gone to work. You see the stress level of the child. You see the commitment of the child. So this is what is happening. The same way our teachers, they are teaching. They have the small babies at home. The baby was sleeping, she started the class. This is for everybody throughout. And the baby woke up and is calling the attention of the teacher to just see her situation. Hats off. The teachers are the heroes of today with the online learning. I salute all the teachers in the world for their uh, contribution to this uh, emergency period of education. The best person to make it interesting and interactive is only in the hands of that particular teacher. What I do in my classroom may not apply to the next classroom. So, OK, for example, I'm a, a, a teacher who is teaching English. Well, I may talk about current affairs. I may like to do some uh, gimmicks in the class. I may like to pull, uh, talk and interact with the children one by one or open up everybody and say a hi and show faces at the primary level, which may not be applicable to the next class or what I do today will not apply to tomorrow in my class. So the teacher will have to understand the pulse of the class, the pulse of the students, the pulse of the present and prepare the classes interactive and make it more interesting. The teacher is the only one who know what the students are. As a principal or as Krish, we can only give them strategies, but the application is the teacher, only one teacher who can make it interesting or whatever technology you apply, whatever strategy you apply, unless you are a part of them, you are involved with them and uh, you are one of them, it will not be successful. I will say that there is no clear cut 
uh, a methodology or strategy that we can have to monitor every child. So this is a time, the changing time. Each and every child is becoming responsible. We have to give room for them to become more responsible. See, there are children who switch on. OK, we start a class at nine. They open up, they leave it open and they may not be there. They go into the washroom. They go for taking uh, water that can happen. And when they are not seen and the teacher sees that they're not seen, they can always say I had technical glitches. So each and every child should be responsible for their acts. Each and every child should know their uh, uh, the importance of uh, studies. They have to and the parents at home also should be giving them the full support. But what happens to places where the parents are going to work? So this is where we are giving the self-paced, uh, self-learning area and uh, self-committed to yourself, to your group. It's what can happen. So I won't. Say, I would say that there's no uh, uh, a particular strategy that we can uh, keep monitoring. We are not policemen. We are not sure what is the situation at every house. There are three children sometimes, there are four children, there are two children. Does the family have enough devices to ha engage all the four children on your online classes? We are giving the classes at the same time. So the child, the parent has only two devices, but they have four children. So what will be their priority? They will definitely look at prioritizing the senior children for the classes and they would allow the lower class, lower children to you know, relax. That could be the thing. What we did for this, we com came up with a solution. We had the recorded uh, work going on and we gave it to the parents and they could actually get into their own comfortable time. And at a later time, the other two children could uh, see the recorded class and they could be benefited. This was one thing we saw. My management wanted that to be, to be a part of it. We did webinars, weekly webinars for parents on Saturdays. We talked about various, uh, various uh, areas, how to handle the parents during COVID time, how to make families more, uh, you know, interactive and uh, the bonding to be increased. So these kind of webinars we conducted. We had uh, parents, uh, student teachers bringing in the music teacher, the dance teacher, bringing in a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, recorded work by our own students and we made it a series and we put uh, kind of released it every week on the YouTube for parents to see, for students to see their uh, friends or uh, their peers coming on the screen and show, show performing themselves. So that way we engage them. Fitness is another, kids fitness is another area. We had two webinars on kids fitness for parents as well as students. And we also worked, uh, there's a work going on where we are going to go online for the summer camp in uh, physical, uh, that is a games summer camp that is going to happen very soon from the school. All the work is completed and we are, we are trying to give our best. But in the future, in the future, I think we need to see, we need to look at it, we need to research and we need to find out how we can uh, incorporate this also to the students because uh, it is very important. The physical fitness, the music, the dance, uh, the dramatization or whatever it is very, very important for the students. Who, if we are going to stay in the same situation for some more time, I think we have to start incorporating that also in our regular curriculum at least once or twice in a week. Why should a pre-primary school kid who is two year old go for an online class? <laughs> want the child to enjoy life because definitely when the child grows up, we'll have to get in online somewhere or the other. OK, that's one thing. In case somebody wants to do an online class, I uh, the other day I was reading an article which said that uh, the Nimans had given uh, details that the attention span for a three year old is not more than 15 minutes. So if you do an online class, it should not be more than 15 minutes for them and it should be really so good and attractive, clownish that the child does not want to move away from you because the child gets so many other materials on net in YouTube, in so many forms, they get better, colorful, uh, you know, um, animation, animated uh, uh, things to watch. Why will they want to watch your face? Unless you are really making it so interesting. And definitely, I don't think they will, the attention span will be more than five to seven minutes. I would like to salute my teachers for the hard effort they've taken in communicating to the parents, you know. It was no easy task at all. Underline it. Every teacher had um, 
spent hours and hours together communicating with a parent, trying to convince them on so many areas, not just online classes, so many other areas that they had responsibility of. Because we close the school before giving the results. So what happens? How are we to give the result? All the parents struggling. Where is the result? So we had done all the put it on the um, uh, you know WAM application that we have, but then the clarification around with 5,000 children in the school clarification. There they contact the class teacher. If they have another problem. They contact the class teacher. This is how things were going on. And we want to convey, convey something. I just send a circular as a principal, but uh, phone calls are coming to the teachers. There has been challenging situations where teachers were not able to manage. We have a model where when the teachers find it difficult, the next higher authority is the supervisors. They pass it on to the supervisors. Further, if there is still a problem, it moves on to the vice principals. And the vice principals, maximum, they try to convince and finish. But however, I always ask people to shoot a mail to my office and then in cases where definitely I need, I have to intervene. I definitely intervene and cases that we have to pass it on to our business office to the management. We do that also and uh, cases where they need to attend. They definitely attend to it and that is how we try to solve the issues. We have a, a counseling cell. We have like me and there are vice principals. There are supervisors. So if anybody want to talk, they are always open to pick up the mobile and speak to us. I've had so many teachers who spoke to me. I've had students who spoke to me uh, with the problems. It may look silly for me, but you know, from their point, it is very, very, very important. The mental health being is very important right at this moment. You know, we need to support them with uh, uh, these kind of things. And uh, we spoke to them. We counsel them whenever there is uh, a need. We talk to them and we try to do our best by our words and the empathy that is required at that point.